Hey everyone, uh, welcome again to our Sunday service whenever you're watching this. My name is Esther and I'm part of Ebenezer Church and I've been part of Ebby for a long time now and I love it. Today we're going to be reading from the book of John, which is one of the books in the New Testament about the life of Jesus. And we're starting a new series. So we're looking at what is John's take on Jesus's life, his death and his life again. We're thinking about who is Jesus? What does he look like and sound like? What does life in his name look like for us today? Now, I had um I just wanted to give a bit of context to where I'm coming from today. I uh, had some really sad news last week and it's meant that planning this has been a bit of a challenge. It's meant that my brain has been a little bit disjointed and all over the place. So if this is how it comes across, that's why. Um but we'll see what God is going to do. Before we tackle this passage, I want to ask you how you feel about feet. Maybe you like them. Maybe you loathe them. Maybe you're somewhere in between. All feet are different. Some are big, some are small. Some have long toes, some have short toes. Some are smooth, some are rough, some are hairy, and some have no hair. Feet get sweaty, they get dirty but they're pretty useful. You're probably wondering, what does any of that have to do with Jesus? But I wonder how easy we find it to be humble and to love others. Perhaps we struggle with humility and actually pride surfaces far too often. Maybe we think that we're better than others. Or perhaps we think that there are others who are better than us. I wonder whether we don't think we're good enough for Jesus to love us. And so we shy away from accepting his love. Jesus calls us, as his followers, to show others the same love that he shows to us. Let's read from the passage. So we're reading from John chapter 13, starting at verse 1. Now the words will also appear on the screen. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very, very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. 
Now, I think I say every time I speak that in the passages I'm given, there is always so much that we could um, pull out and pick apart. But for the purposes of today, there's been two things in particular that have stuck out to me. The first thing is that Jesus calls us to humbly love others. Will we? Now, I started off this talk talking about feet. So let's continue there. The disciples would have got around on foot. They didn't have fancy cars back in the day or push bikes with wonderfully rubber tyres that take us smoothly along the road. The roads weren't made of tarmac either. Granted, they probably had potholes in like we do here, but the earth, uh, the ground would have been made of earth. The roads of earth even. There's still places in the world today actually where the roads are made of earth. Countries in Africa, uh, places like Colombia. The thing is, they didn't, though, wear nice trainers on their feet. They would have worn open-toed sandals. So this would have meant that in the hot months, their feet would have been absolutely caked in dust. But in the wet months, their feet would have been dirty and covered in mud. Their feet would not have been in the best condition. But we read in this passage that Jesus chooses to wash their feet. Now, washing feet was an act of respect. It was generally done to someone who was regarded as better than the person washing their feet. And generally back then in the ancient times, it was servants or slaves who washed people's feet. They were considered to be the lowest class. They did as they were told. They didn't have a choice. However, this meal that we read about in the passage... This was a meal of friends. There was no servant to wash the feet of Jesus or the disciples. So Jesus puts himself as the servant. He removes his outer garment and wrapped a towel around his waist. This was the way that a servant dressed and would have been despised by Jew and Greek alike. What would the disciples have been thinking? What is Jesus doing? He's our friend, our teacher, our rabbi. Why is he putting himself in the position of a servant? It seems that after three years of friendship, miracles and outrageous behaviour, Jesus was still doing things that shocked his friends and his followers. We read that Jesus decided to get up close and personal with the dirt, the cracks, the blisters and the dust to love his friends. This act couldn't have been further from what anyone would have expected from the Son of God, the Saviour they had been waiting for. But you might well think, and quietly so you'd be right in thinking, but these were Jesus' friends. It was easy for him to love them. But we need to remember that Jesus washed Judas' feet, despite knowing that Judas would go on to betray him. He washed Peter's feet, knowing that Peter would go on to deny him, not once, but three times. I wonder how Jesus felt washing his friend's feet, knowing what they would go on to do. Jesus doesn't call us to love just the people we like or who treat us well. He calls us to love everyone. Now in the passage, Jesus says, unless I wash you, You have no part with me. Notice he uses the word with. Jesus wants us to partner with him. By washing their feet, Jesus is teaching them and us the spirit of self-sacrifice. He is saying that we need to accept him and his love for us so that we can show this love to others. We must be willing to be self-sacrificial, to be humble, And whilst this can be a really hard lesson to learn, and sometimes even harder to live out, it is what Jesus asks of his followers. Now, humility means the state of being humble. Both the word humility and the word humble have their origin in the Latin word humilis, which means low. However, 
Humility was despised in the ancient world and thought of as a sign of weakness. So here we read that Jesus is challenging the worldly view. He is saying that lowly service to others isn't weak, but is in fact an honourable act. He's showing his disciples and us what he wants us to do to others. In verses 14 to 16, Jesus is highlighting that no one is better or greater than anyone else. And this is the mindset he calls us to have today. So let's just pause for a moment. I'd like us to think about what the equivalent of washing someone's feet is for you today, right now, in your current situation. What does it look like, feel like, sound like, or smell like even? Maybe for you right now, it's taking time to think through, is there someone or a group of people who you really struggle to love. Think about why. Let's just take a moment to pause. Loving others and living humbly isn't always easy. Sometimes we are the ones who get sweaty. We get dirty. We can feel blistered, hurt and sore. Loving others in the way Jesus modelled means putting our heart, time and energy in. It comes with the risk of it not turning out as we hoped or expected. But loving others can also be incredibly rewarding. We see people become who God intended them to be. We see them gain confidence in who they are. We also can learn so much about who we are as children of God. It teaches us to be humble and it can be incredibly life-giving. Now I feel really blessed at times because the work that I do is working with ex-offenders who a lot of society consider to be pretty low down the pecking order of those who should be loved. We train people from churches to be mentors and they spend about an hour a week with someone who's been convicted of a crime and who is now in the community trying to change their life, just being there to listen, support and encourage. I do it because I believe that people deserve more than one chance that people can change and actually by investing a bit of time in people they can come to see that their life doesn't have to be the revolving life of crime but can be something way more fruitful and something that they can be pleased about. I believe that everyone deserves to receive the love of Jesus and that is what we get to do but it's not always easy. Some people we support make it really easy to love them. They are the model mentee. But then we have others that sometimes disengage. They don't always work towards the goals they've identified. They expect their mentor to do the work, which 100% is not going to happen. These are the people that are harder to love. That is where I have to step in to myself. I have to lean on God and ask him to show me Why do you love them, God? Help me see that. Just as Jesus let Judas make his choice to betray him, we too have to allow people to make their choices. This is exactly what God does with us. As followers of Jesus, we are given a choice. We can choose to be like Jesus and love others with humility. Or we can choose to act and think like the world, that humility is weak, 
and that there are people who we are better than. Jesus calls us to humbly love others. Will we? Now the next thing uh, that stuck out to me about this passage is that Jesus wants to wash our feet. Do we let him? The passage says that Jesus knew the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Jesus knew that he was going to die. The passage tells us that Jesus showed those who he loved the full extent of his love. Jesus washing the disciples' feet was a demonstration of the love he had for them, and by extension, the love he has for us. I wonder what our first reaction would have been had we been in that room. Would we have been like Peter and said, No, you shall never wash my feet? Or would we have accepted Jesus' loving act? What I noticed when reading this passage is that even when Peter says no to Jesus washing his feet, Jesus doesn't say, all right then, suit yourself, I'll just carry on to the next person. Instead, he takes time to explain the importance of what he was doing, to help Peter really understand why he needed to let Jesus wash his feet. And in response to Peter's request, Uh, Jesus, uh, when Peter requests Jesus to wash his hands and his head as well, Jesus says, those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. What does he mean by this? Those who have accepted Jesus and who choose to follow him have already been bathed clean. We've been cleansed and the way that we live life has begun to change, to be more in line in the way Jesus lived. However, we are human. We are still susceptible to the worldly way of thinking, the belief that some are better than others. Maybe some of us believe that we should be regarded as better than others because of what we do or where we come from. The washing of feet symbolises the daily renewing of the grace of God that all of us who follow Jesus need. The saying sorry to God for the wrong and hurtful things we have done or thought that day. The disciples allowed Jesus to love them by letting him wash their feet. There is humility in allowing others to love us. And actually even Jesus demonstrates this humility. The book of Luke, which is another book in the New Testament about the life of Jesus, says uh, in in chapter 7 that Jesus was invited to the home of Simon the Pharisee, who was a religious leader. The thing is, when Jesus arrives, he's not offered any water to wash his feet. And he's not greeted with a kiss, which is another sign of friendship and respect. Instead, the passage says that a woman who lived a sinful life, came to Jesus. She began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. Simon and the Pharisee, Simon the Pharisee and the other guests are disgusted that Jesus would allow this to happen. That Jesus would let a woman living in sin touch him, making him unclean, in their opinion. Yet Jesus welcomes this woman. He shows humility and love by letting someone who is considered a sinner and not worthy by society to wash his feet, to show him love. It's not surprising that once again Jesus is challenging society's views and cultural norms. So I wonder how many of us find it hard to receive love from others. Do we find ourselves saying or thinking... I can deal with this. I don't need any help or comfort from others. I've got this. You may disagree with me, but I think there's an element of pride, of self-preservation when we have these thoughts. Jesus uses other people to show us his love. And by not letting other people love us, it's as though we're not letting Jesus love us. I speak to myself when I say this. 
Jesus chooses to love us even when we aren't living, loving him back. He wants to wash our feet. Do we let him? Now I've already said that Jesus washed Judas's feet, although he knew he would betray him. Jesus said that not everyone was clean. He was referring to Judas, yet he still washed his feet. I wonder if some of us don't feel clean enough to let Jesus wash our feet. We don't feel clean enough to accept Jesus' love for us. The thing is, Jesus came into this world. He lived a life showing God's love to everyone, even those deemed to be the lowest of social class. He died on a cross and by his death, he made it possible for us to be forgiven for all the wrong and hurtful things that we have done and to be brought back into a relationship with God. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He wants to wash your feet. He wants you to accept his love and let him love you. So what does this mean for us? Maybe it means stepping out of your comfort zone and showing love to someone or a group of people who you find it hard to love. Perhaps we need to say sorry to God for not being humble, and for not loving others in the way that he does. Maybe we need to allow others to love us, to humbly accept that love, even if we don't feel lovable. But perhaps it's about saying yes to Jesus and the love that he has for you. And what might things look like if we do any of those things? We might see someone's life change as they receive love and learn that they are loved just the way they are. Our lives might change as we learn to receive love. We may understand even more the extent of Jesus' love for us. But it might be that as we receive Jesus' love and forgiveness, we feel freedom, we experience healing, and we begin to accept who we are. Now I'd encourage people to, to spend some more time with this, on this this week. It's not a small thing. So yeah, let Jesus love you.